So, <clears throat> as it says, I'll uh, talk to you about the journey we um, undertook um, back in 2015, um, give you a bit of background and talk to you about some of the due diligence that we did, uh, some of the learnings that we took and how we now manage uh, the whole process uh, within our network. So from a background perspective, historically uh, we were particularly reticent about dealing uh, with perishable and foodstuffs um, because we come from a distribution background where you know, diesel vehicles and so on and so forth and there were um, potential legislation, uh, operational uh, contamination and subsequent um, litigation concerns. So for the 20 years that I worked in the business, um, we always kept uh, that as restricted within our terms and conditions. However, in 2015, um, we had a group-wide um, uh, initiative to investigate the uh, fresh food market um, and to offer our services to uh, the fresh marketplace. Um, I headed up the team responsible for investigating this um, and we established a feasibility study uh, on perishable deliveries in our network um, and this was backed up by an operational team to make sure that we were um, compliant uh, to all legislation. Um, in December 2015, we achieved sign-off, uh, agreed the process uh, and went live um, with a rollout to 58 depots, all of our hubs and 7,500 drivers. Uh, we rolled that out in four weeks um, and our first customer went live on the 26th of Jan 2016. So um, before we developed our service proposition, we looked at the marketplace um, and there are four distinct sectors that we identified. Um, butchers and grocers, um, particularly, uh, there was particular attention there from uh, regional and specialist uh, butchers um, who tend to have very high volumes at our peak times. Um, so it's a consideration for us to make sure how we manage uh, those volumes around peak events, uh, particularly turkeys and hams, uh, not unsurprisingly. Um, recipe boxes, which is very much the uh, dynamic area within uh, parcel delivery. Um, there is uh, a growing dependency on reliability. Uh, reliability <laughs> drives sales uh, and repeat orders. So the uh, level of service has to be um, of the highest possible quality. Um, Pre-prepared meals, which uh, tend to be in the uh, diet or uh, health food sector. Um, and then hampers, which again tend to be very peak oriented um, and driven by uh, a number of the major hamper um, dealers across the country. So we conducted a uh, hundred secret shopper, um, in excess of a hundred secret shopper uh, trials to understand best in class packaging and the best customer experience. Um, and during uh, 2016, we saw uh, 63 customers come on board. We delivered 720,000 parcels. Uh, in 2017, we dealt with 142 customers and we delivered about 2.3 million parcels last year. And we anticipate that we will deliver about 5 million fresh parcels uh, in the UK this year. So following that, um, excuse me one second, let me come up on the screen here. Thank you. So, um, Following the work that we did, we uh, established a service uh, specification. Um, and the first thing that we uh, dis uh, decided on is that we could only offer um, passive cold chain. So uh, effectively, the responsibility for the, um, the packaging and the temperature control within that uh, is the responsibility of the shipper. Um, and uh, in the main, we don't run any form of refrigerated vehicles. Uh, we have some major customers where we will run the line hall in refrigerated vehicles, but our uh, delivery fleet is purely ambient. Um, the services we offer because of the requirements around the packaging and the lifespan um, are next day. Um, time services, 10, 30, 12, and next day. Um, and one of the key requirements is that we need full supporting data so that we can keep the customers informed that their deliveries come in and they can interact with us and make alternative arrangements should they need to do so. Um, we interact via SMS, email, and uh, we have an app. Um, currently, we accept next day products with a minimum lifespan uh, of 36 hours, which uh, allows for collection, uh, trunking overnight, and then delivery the following day. 
We also have certain postcodes where we deliver two day um, deliveries into, but they are specific postcodes. Um, and uh, again, the packaging has to be suitable to, uh, to match. Uh, and unless all that specification is met, then we're, we're not in a position to uh, carry those products. Um, and one of the main, one of the main uh, excuse me. I think I've broken your kit, I'm afraid. Is it just completely closed? Yeah. Please excuse us for just a few seconds. And let's try and bring this up again. There we go. Thank you very much. So clearly, packaging sign-off is a, a very important factor within uh, the, uh, the life cycle for ourselves. So we undertake a rigorous end-to-end uh, -end test for every customer that uses our service. Um, that's from collection point through hub to uh, delivery point. We take images, uh, collect narrative against all of that to ensure that the, uh, the product arrives at the right temperature. Uh, all aspects of the packaging is examined, make sure it uh, meets all the required standards. Um, we, it's also assessed for its compatibility through our network, so uh, we, we're a uh, hub operation, it's automated sort, um, so we need to ensure there's no crush damage um, and that the parcels travel safely through the network. Anything that's, uh, that crops up, we, uh, we share that back with the shipper um, and then put some remedial work in place to then uh, test again. Once signed off, we're in a position to start trading. Probably the biggest area for us to uh, focus on was around hygiene and cleaning. Um, uh, and pleasingly, as we worked through uh, the requirements, uh, the industry requirements, it became clear that we pretty much were compliant already um, as we look further into it. There were some changes that we had needed to make to so cleaning requirements around vans, trailers, and uh, depots, dealing with spillages. Um, these areas uh, had to be worked on. We introduced what we call red tops in our business, which are just standard operating procedures. Um, to allow us to uh, be compliant um, and as part of that we had to introduce some different cleaning materials but that was pretty much it. We were pretty much uh, good to go um, uh, come beginning of uh, 2016. Um, pest control was also an important factor but uh, all of our sites have pest control in place. We needed to make some slight tweaks to our pest control uh, contracts but uh, again um, we were up and running within four weeks. As I already stated, we ran and rolled this out inside four weeks across the whole network. Okay, so um, our fresh food proposition is underpinned by the guidelines that you can see on the screen in front of you there. Um, we can safely and compliantly deliver fresh and frozen products. Um, every customer that we deal with is, operates under amended terms because we need to make sure that all of these areas have been uh, dealt with before we start carrying the product. Uh, full packaging sign-off um, and this 100% email and SMS. Uh, as we've come through to another couple of slides, you'll see why that's so important. Um, but we need to stay in contact with the consumer. Um, leave safe and deliver to neighbour is a must uh, for us to achieve the service levels that uh, our customers are looking for. Um, and we would expect, as a minimum, with uh, everything uh, on the screen there, to achieve a 99.5% service level. For food, it's uh, slightly ahead of that, um, and we're looking to uh, close that gap on 100% more and more uh, as we go through 2018. Um, clearly, that's crucial. If we don't deliver the parcel and we are unable to offload it, um, then ultimately it ends in a disposal. So that's costly. Uh, so we have to avoid that at all costs. Um, so, from a delivery perspective, um, the delivery point, we either gain a signature, or we leave it safe, or we leave the parcel with a neighbour. Um, we take a photo of the left safe place, or we capture the uh, name and the house number of the uh, recipient. Uh, drivers are instructed to only leave a calling card when absolutely they can't leave it safe, for whatever reason that might be. Um, and uh, uh, notifications are sent to the customers, either showing picture of where we've left the parcel safe 
or confirming who's got their parcel um, and when we left it with them. Uh, currently, consumers can't redirect to shops. Uh, it's an area that I'm working on this year because um, there are some complexities around that, but it's something that we would like to, uh, to put in place um, if uh, tech and procedures allow it. Um, and full tracking status is available to the consumer and the customer at all times via SMS email and the app. Um, to underpin this, we have a uh, food quality team and they track 16,000 parcels every day through our network um, and they are there to deal with any on-road issues with food deliveries. So if the driver can't find the address or the driver um, has left the card uh, when they shouldn't have done, um, they will be in contact to make sure that that uh, delivery takes place that day. So I make no apology for the next uh, slide. It's quite garish. Um, it's, um, it's, it, it sits, this is a, a, a copy of a poster that sits in our depots. Um, it's to remind our drivers um, that uh, what, we, what they need to do with, with uh, fresh parcels. Um, we did have a much more subtle, so the, uh, the label with the knife and fork and food items, we did have a much more subtle sort of black apple that we started with. It didn't have the desired effect, it didn't draw the eye, um, so we had to move to something a little bit more uh, striking. Um, every parcel has a food item uh, sticker attached to it. Um, in addition, uh, the delivery options are reiterated on the driver's handheld so that they understand that they can leave the parcel safe, they can leave it with a neighbour. Um, and it's proved very successful. Um, there were some, still some tech advances that we want to make, but uh, the, the visuals have been very successful and we introduced those probably middle of last year. Um, so if we come on to customer notifications, um, every parcel that we ship uh, receives a ship notification. Um, and I'll go back to a uh, piece around uh, customer data. We need to know either SMS or email for every parcel that we're shipping, uh, or they need to have downloaded our app. Um, this allows them to then interact with that parcel. So if the parcel shipped today, they can interact today. They can say leave with neighbor. They can give us a, 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 a safe place location. Uh, alternatively, on the day of delivery, we send them a predict notification of the hour window that we'll be delivering the parcel. Um, they can interact at this point as well to uh, change uh, the uh, delivery to a neighbor or a safe place. And then Lastly, we will uh, contact them and let them know that we've made that delivery either to a neighbour or, in this instance, the front porch. Um, and they can click through on the show me icon, which uh, gives them the location of the parcel. Um, customers using the app have um, a number of other advantages. So <coughs> driver, uh, driver live tracking is available online and via the app. Um, we do a half hourly push notification for all parcels that are delivered via the app. Um, they can select preferred neighbours. I've got some stats to share with you around that. Um, they can ask for parcels to be delivered between the hours of nine and three. And I, did, I avoid the school run. Um, they can capture safe place pictures. So uh, rather than putting in text, they can take a photo of where they want their parcel left. It appears on the driver's handheld. Um, Local shop collection, as I've said, is not available today, but uh, I, that's something we're working on for 2018. They can have multiple delivery addresses, so it might be that they choose to have it delivered to a friend, a mother, father, whatever wherever it might be. Um, we have some same-day re-delivery options that are available via the app, um, and callback requests and chat to our customer services team is all available via the app. Uh, just to give you some brief stats around what our customers are choosing. So 10% of people love, their, uh, love a neighbor. They have a labor, neighbor that they uh, particularly would like us to deliver to. 10% of people uh, have neighbors that they really wouldn't want us to deliver to. Uh, so it saves that awkward conversation and knocking on the door of the neighbor who's, uh, oh, your kids keep kicking the ball into the garden or whatever it might be. It's, uh, it's uh, just some interesting insight into uh, what we feel about our neighbors. 7% go into shops, so clearly, uh, the reason I would like to uh, uh, make that available is because customers customers like it. Um, safe place, 55% is by far and away the most common uh, choice. Uh, more and more people are going down that route, especially for food. And 44% of people want us to avoid the school run um, and take that uh, 9 till 3 delivery window. So just, uh, just to wrap up, really, from a future development perspective, um, 
we are uh, a Europe-wide group. Um, it is a European initiative to uh, look at uh, food deliveries. So cross-border is very much on our agenda. Um, I wouldn't imagine it would be live in 2018, but it, as the, uh, the rest of the group come online, we will uh, look to grow that uh, cross-border. Some complications around that because of packaging and time scales and so on and so forth, but uh, nothing that can't be overcome. Shop deliveries I've already mentioned, um, and it's something that we uh, we want to we will be looking at in 2018. Um, we are also looking at some technical services uh, enhancements, which will help to more easily identify food parcels um, uh, in depot, so that we can make sure that they always go out for delivery and, and are completed. Um, active cold chain, uh, we currently run an active cold chain business in uh, France called Chrono Fresh. Um, that is, uh, the goods are collected uh, in in the cold chain. They remain in the cold chain throughout the whole transit through the hubs, etc. It's very expensive. It's uh, it takes up a lot of um, a lot of space in depots uh, for reefers and 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 obviously the uh, the vehicles that are required to make those deliveries. But as legislation changes, uh, we need to be mindful that that potentially is something that uh, we will need to do more of um, across more uh, countries. Um, and we constantly are uh, watching for legislation changes so that we're able to react uh, and continue to deliver uh, fresh food. Thanks for your time.